Hi everyone, I'm on a little bit early. We're going to get started momentarily. everyone, I'm Alba. We're here just a little bit early, so I'm just waiting for some people to join in and um, checking all my equipment, making sure that we're um, all going good. I see that it's just 2 o'clock right now, and some people are starting to join in. Um, as I said, I'm going to be um, doing an In the Hoop project, some shadow work trapunto. For those of you who might not be familiar with what that is, uh, it's kind of like applique going a step over and beyond uh, what applique should be. And I'm, I'm just seeing that there's like a horrible glare really trying to adjust um, and get everything positioned well. I see Mitzi, I see Marsha. I'm starting to see people come on. Please let me know where you're coming in from. Um, let me know if you've ever done machine embroidery for before. If you are new to machine embroidery, um, just let me know a little bit about yourself. So I'm seeing Mississippi. I'm starting to see people join in. Um, what I wanted to do before I got started is I wanted to go over one thing that I'm seeing that a lot of people are asking. And that is about how to get into a live. So what I'm going to do is turn my camera so that you're seeing my phone and not me. And I'm going to share with you um, how I do this. Now, the most important thing to do to get onto your lives and to get to them quickly, easily, is to make sure that your notifications are turned on. And this is a Facebook process. I know quite a few people ask us to really revamp how you get to the lives and, and what you're doing. And this is really controlled by Facebook so it's really tough for us to do but what I'm going to do right now is turn this around perfect and I'm going to make my phone a little bit higher and put that into view if it's turned around so when I go to Facebook and I'm looking at my feed and I'm going to back this up a little bit. Perfect. Right at the bottom on my phone, it looks like a bell. When I get notifications and alerts, it'll show me a one, how many notifications I've been getting. And I've turned on my notifications for Facebook Lives. When I've liked the page or the group that I want to be alerted of Lives to, that's how it alerts me, by liking and following that page. Now, I already checked that I had my notification. So I have a notification to someone who's reacted to something to this live right here. And I have this notification. Junomi Sewing Classrooms is now live. And when I tap, it brings me to the video. And this is like a second or two behind. When I tap that now video, live. I am now viewing the live video currently going on. I've lowered my volume on that so you're not getting too much distraction. And you'll see all the notes. 
And what you want to do on the bottom, it'll say write comments, and that's how you let all the comments in. It brings me to the And video, also and you want like to share. Behind. And I'm going to shut that because getting that delayed reaction um, can be a, a bit bothersome, and I'm just getting some things out of my way. And I'm going to turn the camera around again and move the camera. And as I said, I'm going to be moving this camera back and forth a lot so i'm seeing um family friends lots of people joining me uh from new jersey i'm noticing mississippi i'm noticing a lot of india from all over the world and i really love this how we're able to unite uh because of our our, our common love uh, for sewing, for crafting, for quilting, for our Janome machines. Um, I know I wouldn't be able to accomplish half of what I do without my Janome machines. So we're going to be doing Shadow Work Trapunto. And I am going to be moving, turning my camera to give you an explanation of what this is. And I'm going to position my camera and right there is what I wanted you to see. So this is one of the designs that's on some of our machines. This is the way it's intended to be done. It is meant as a quilting motif for a block. This can be done through one layer of fabric. It can be done through a quilt sandwich. And it is meant to be flat going through just that quilt sandwich and as i worked with this i played with this i brought it into my digitizer i've done a few things with this one of the first things that i did is i was like you know this would make such a pretty applique and i did this in my digitizing software so when you see that, I'm going to try and enlarge that. So you see, I brought this into my digitizer. And some of those outlines that were a straight running line, I turned them into a blanket stitch or an applique stitch. I looked at that, and it's beautiful. It's pretty. I like the color that the fabric gave this design. But I wanted dimension. I wanted it to have loft. I wanted it to be trapuntoed. So what trapunto normally traditionally is in quilting, I know a lot of long armors do this, they will add an extra layer of batting. They will add extra layers of fabric that traditionally is flannel. And then you overlay that with fabric and get muted soft shadow. What I've never liked about traditional Trapunto shadow work, and here's the first one I ever did with the design that's built into the 15,000. Um, I wash my quilts. I like the look and the feel of when quilts are washed. So um, with flannel, I have gotten flannels that have bled, that have shrunk, and I wound up with ruined pieces. So what I have done in place of using batting and flannel, multiple layers to be gone through, I worked with fleece. So right here I have my hoop, and it is hooped with just my batting by working with fleece and normally i like to do this project with yellow in the center i think it just pops more um these were the only colors i had available to me um in new jersey we are still under tremendous restrictions so getting fabric is not easy for me So um, I did have to work with what I had. 
So when you're thinking about shadow work, I want a nice soft pink, a nice soft green. The fabrics that are being laid underneath or being appliqued need to be very, very bright. And I'm going to show you why. Because in part of this, we're going to be overlaying a white fabric. Now, I usually recommend Batiste. I got the finest white fabric I had available to me. And I am going to see if I could get that closer. And you see what a difference that makes. And I'm going to try and do that. You see at the bottom of the screen what a bright, almost fluorescent color. And when I go to that overlay on top, how it mutes it down so much. I probably would have gone to orange color over that pink. I'm going to even show you a yellow. So you really want to test your fabrics with that overlay fabric. And that fabric that I overlay, I really do like to use, um, but any type of very sheer, thin, fine cotton uh, would be good. Now I'm noticing that people are saying that I'm freezing up. Is this still an issue? I'm not seeing any comments. I'm going to continue. I'm going um, perfect. I'm seeing some comments now from Fort Wayne. So I know that everyone is with me. So the main reason that I like to use the fleece, it gives me loft like batting does. And it gives me color in one fabric without having to cut through multiple pieces of fabric. Now, I am going to turn this around so that you could see, and I'm going to sit, hopefully this. I know Anita Good has a collection of Trapunto Shadow Work designs, but you can basically use any design that's a quilting motif or an applique. Um, an applique, you want to take a look that it's a simple design without a Okay, I think I'm back again. I'm sorry I'm having freezing problems uh, with the Wi-Fi. Um, I'm trying my best here. I know uh, it looks like bad weather outside, so I'm going to try and uh, keep this moving along. I know I froze for a good half a minute there, so I apologize about that. So I'm using fleece, just to repeat myself for those of you who uh, missed that or, or got in the middle of that freeze. Because fleece comes in that large variety of colors. I'm able to get that really bright, almost fluorescent. And it does not shrink. It does not bleed. So it works a little bit better. When you're picking a design for this, I strongly advise stitching out the design so that you could see the layers and how it stitches. The design that I gave you, um, and I provided a design, and it's what I'm going to be doing. The flower stitches first, and then the leaves. So when I layer my fabrics that I am going to be doing the applique with, I want to make sure that that flower color is on top, and the leaf color is underneath. I am placing these fabrics right side up, and that will um, make that flow easier. So what I'm going to do now is move this to my machine. So I'm moving my camera. I'm going to be switching the direction of this. Now I know there's been, um, I've been going in and out with the Wi-Fi. When you go back and view this, it will not look as interrupted as the live is right now. So I'm turning my camera around. 
and I am going to go to my screen. Sorry about that with my thumb. And right now I'm at the Memory Craft 15,000. Please do not worry if this is not your machine. You'll be able to follow along. With whatever machine you are at, going from sewing to embroidery, if you have a dual machine, always is a double machine icon. Now mine is at the bottom, yours may be at the side, it may be up top, but it will always look the same. And you will get the message, are you ready? Do you really want to switch to embroidery? And yes, I do. So I'm going to touch OK. And that quickly, I have gone from embroidery to sewing, from sewing to embroidery, that I've done that switch over just that easily. Now, when I am picking a design and I downloaded the design the same way that it was offered to everybody, I put it on a USB stick and I'm going to open that in my machine. I like to open and have everything in my edit screen. In my edit screen, without a design picked, the only option I have is my hoop selection. So I know that for my machine and my design, I'm going to go to the second largest hoop, this square 23. And on every hoop near the locking mechanism is the name of the hoop. So you want to double check, and I pick my hoop first. I have visitors from Amsterdam. I have visitors from all over. I know that it's been frozen in and out. I had about a half a minute that it stopped recording. Please know that when you go back, it will not look this interrupted. So now on my machine, and I'm going to turn on a little bit more light, and I'm going to move that right there. I am going to go to that folder with the arrow pointing out. And I'm just tilting that. There we go. That arrow pointing out. This is to get designs outside of my machine. And I have the option of going from what's stored in my machine or what's stored in my USB stick. So I know I put this design in my USB stick. Now, you need to remember where you put your design. I did not put my design in any folder system. I had an empty memory stick and I just simply plopped the design on that USB stick. So on our machines, you're going to open up to a secondary folder. Now on some of the older machines, this is the only place that you could put your designs. But on the newer generation of machines, I can place them anywhere. So I know my design is up one level. And look, page one of two, my folders show up first. And on page two, there is my design. I know this gets asked often. So here is my design in my hoop. And I'm really not going to be making any changes. But I know on the 30th, if you come back and tune in with me on the Janome sewing machine page, I'm doing a class where I'm going over all of these edit buttons in embroidery. So make sure to tune in for that class. I am going to select OK. And it is asking me again, are you, do you have the correct hoop? Are you getting everything prepared correctly? And I did. Now, when you're cutting and prepping your batting, I did not give you exact sizes on this because I did not know what size hoop you were going to be using. Um and what size design you were going to be using. Uh, Kathy, yes, 
this class will be available later as a save class and you will not see that freezing as much as you're getting right now. It's just simply beyond my control. So this design is a two color design. I have the center flower and the leaves. Now when I'm doing applique or anything where I'm doing steps, especially like in the hoop applique, looking at the whole design really doesn't help me. So I like to go to this icon right here, a double flower. And when I press that, it goes from the embroidery view to the whole design view. And I want to see what's going to embroider first. So I know that my flower will embroider first and then my leaves. And I'm going to attach my hoop to my machine and I'm going to be moving my camera so that you could see. Now I have my machine threaded with a pre-wound bobbin. I am using 40 weight polyester embroidery thread and my needle is a purple tip needle. I use a purple tip needle whenever I am going through batting. So I'm turning some extra lights on. Perfect. So now you're seeing my hoop. And I'm going to be going back and forth on my machine screen. I want to baste and see where this design is going. I know for me the design is taking up pretty much all of the hoop. But this is a good thing to do. And there is my icon. And I could either visually baste, visually trace or based in different areas. And I know there were several videos done on this function. So right now I am going to start my based function. I'm gonna hit start once and hit it a second time. I like to pull up my bobbin thread when I do this based to make sure that it stitches. This is just such a loose stitch that I really do like to pull up that thread so that you're able to catch and it'll start stitching flawlessly. So I was asked about the bobbin case that I'm using. I am using a standard red bobbin case. And when I'm doing quilting designs, I would either use the red or the blue bobbin case for lower tension. Um, you do not want to use that tighter tension simply because of the layers that you're going through. So I'm going to use the same bobbin case as if I were trying to free motion. Here I am. I'm getting that all centered. And you know, these live videos are really fun because when I check this earlier, it looks so bright over here. And now that I'm live, it's quite dark so i apologize for that so gene will there be a file for non-embroidery machines um this is an embroidery function so um as of right now there is not a file to do this by hand but if you pull up coloring book pages i sometimes use coloring book pages as my hand embroider. So right now I am placing my green fleece. 
down in the hoop. I am placing my floral color in the hoop. And now what I'm going to do is start my design. So my design on the screen right now shows that that flower will stitch. The base thing I did just to make sure that where I'm placing my fabric is going to cover this embroidery. Not to wind up with the fleece partially covering something. I am hitting start. I am on a speed of 800 stitches per minute. I have done this as a full 1,000 stitches per minute. And this is going to start embroidering that flower. So this part of it is the applique part of the trapunto. By adding that thicker layer is going to make this puff up even more than just doing it through a quilt sandwich. Now on my machine screen, I activated through this center cross mark. You'll see that cross moving in the same position that my needle is in. And I sometimes like to look at the screen and what's embroidering to really get a good idea of where that design is going. On this particular machine, I get my rundown. Here I'm at 500 and some odd out of 2,200 um, stitches in total. This is going to take another four minutes to complete. So these are really quick, easy running designs. And when you're first choosing a design of your own, not the one I provided, you want to keep to a design that is simple and easy. Remember, you're going to have to cut all those pieces and trim away. So I've done this with very intricate designs, but it's really fussy to cut all those shapes out. Now my flower is almost done. Now when you're thinking about the size of the batting you're putting in the hoop, I know that got interrupted with uh, my internet going out. You want to think about where this is going to be used. If I'm making an 18 inch pillow, I'm going to cut this a couple of inches larger so that I could square it up afterwards. Um, it's really tough getting everything precise. Now what I am doing here is I am going to be moving a little bit back. Perfect. Now. What we're going to do is trim away just that pink. Don't forget that the machine has a hoop forward feature. And I like to, and I'm going to come to the other side, otherwise all you're going to see is my elbow. I like to lift up the fabric um, to give me a nice close cut. If you do remove your hoop from the machine, which I am going to momentarily, I will let you know, please make sure you're not putting this on your lap, um, on an uneven surface. You want to make sure that you're putting this on a flat surface, which is what I am going to do right now. So I am going to first move. So here is my flat surface. I am going to swing my light around to really light up that area. And I'm going to bring my hoop. And I very carefully brought that to the table and laid that down. What I don't want to do 
like I said, is cut this and be working with this on my lap on an uneven area. Get scissors that you're really comfortable with and you want to trim all around. Now, the main reason I put this on the table is because of the live. If I really tried to trim this, all you would see is my elbows and my hands and not what I'm doing. So on the table, the way that I'm doing it gives you a much better view. What I don't want you to do is cut into the green fabric and I want you to be very neat because we're going to be seeing all of this fabric. You, you're going to see if you cut in a sloppy manner. If I leave chunks of fabric, it will be visible later. Now I'm going a lot faster than I normally would. I want you to take your time with this and we're gonna trim. And I'm coming around to the other side. Perfect, it looks like I'm giving you a view of what I'm doing and not of my elbows. Now I've trimmed that fabric. Now what I want to do with that is really clean that up. There's a couple of spots where it was left fuzzy. I want to make sure to clean up all that lint and just really clean this up. Curved scissors like I have here are really helpful because it allows you to put the scissor down and not cut into what's underneath. And I know all of my scissors are in such desperate need of sharpening. I was going to do that before everything shut down. And I'm trimming any loose threads that I'm seeing. And I'm really eyeing this and watching it and trying to get as neat as I can. So you see that I've gone pretty close. I'm moving my light. And I have trimmed away at all of the flower design. And now I am all set to bring this to my machine. I am very careful with the way I handle and hold my hoop. I do not want to stretch that batting. I do not want to stretch and get anything out of the way. So now I am back at my machine and I'm going to connect my hoop back in. I'm also giving myself some more light. And I'm taking a look if there's any questions. Carol, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying this. Wonderful, wonderful. Now I am going to go to the leaf design. And what I am doing is I am switching out my thread. And I'm also going to show you um, my threading and using that needle threader. So I'm just raising up my tripod so that you see more of the machine. So Marina, thank you so much. Marina and Emily are our uh, Janome employees that man this page and they're sharing some the downloads for the designs that I digitized out for you for this one that we're doing. 
I am going to use needle up down. I want to make sure my needle is in the correct position. I am locking my machine, which lowers my foot. You never want to use a needle threader with the foot up. I am going in that V'd groove, and I just broke my thread. It doesn't only happen to you at home. It happens to all of us. I'm flossing, making sure it's in that take-up lever. And I am going to touch my automatic threader. And there we go, I am threaded. Now the other thing I want to uh, mention is you don't need to pull a really big tail. If you leave that thread the length that it comes out, you will not have a thread to trim later on. So right now I am about to start my design. I'm just making sure that if any of you are following along, that you're keeping up with me. Do I need to slow down? Please let me know. I'm not seeing any desperate cries going, wait, wait, slow down. So I'm going to touch start, and it will start embroidering those four outer leaves. Now I know there's a lot of terminology confusion, and people are saying, but I have a computerized embroidery machine, and they're talking about decorative stitches. So machine embroidery is when you attach a hoop to the machine, you need to open up a design, and that design is running the machine. I am not at a foot pedal. I am not moving anything. The machine is in complete control. And that is what is meant by machine embroidery. Your machine on Janome's must have this function from the beginning. It is not something that can be added on. So I just wanted to let you know what I meant by machine embroidery. I know there's sometimes confusion. Now I'll be honest, when I first got into machine embroidery, I didn't think that this would take over my life the way it has. I really did a lot of hand painting, hand embroidering, and I thought that would be sufficient. But um, when I started doing embroidery, it is addictive. I will warn you now. Just like when you first made a first quilt, it really took over and it became something so much more. Uh, embroidery is like that. So I'm going to lower a little bit so that you can see. And Patsy, I think it's a great idea. I always recommend watching these videos live and then going back to follow along. It makes it much, much easier. So now we're left at the trimming part, just like we did for the flower. Do not cut into your batting. You will have to start all over again. So I like to flip my fabric back. I'm gonna tilt that a little bit. I like to tilt my fabric back and put my scissor in there so that I could see what I am cutting and it gives me a much closer cut. I'm going to move my hoop onto the tabletop again like we did before, so that you're not looking at my elbows as I'm cutting. And I'm gonna be right there on the tabletop with my hoop. And I'm gonna change that tilt a little bit. And I'm sorry for making you seasick. 
I am really trying. I do not have a camera person, so it is just me. And I am going to trim away at all of the leaves and around the flowers. Now I have tried doing this with pre-cut pieces. And what I found is at this seam, it pulls away and left me with a gap. And I wasn't happy with that, which is why I did this with two full pieces um, a fleece and not pre-cut pieces. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. When I first did this, how I discovered and stumbled onto this was by sheer mistake. And sometimes our mistakes are the best way to learn. I had hooped my fabric and I was going to be embroidering the following day. And I started my embroidery thinking I had fabric and batting in my hoop. And I just had the batting in the hoop. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, and I had done a very intricate design. Of course, I didn't realize it till I was three quarters of the way done. Isn't that the way it always goes? So once I had an applique on batting, I thought about this and I'm like, well, I'm not going to let this go to waste. What could I do? And that's when I thought about the shadow work and getting a piece of fabric to overlay on top of this. So this was stumbled. I stumbled onto this by sheer accident. And I think sometimes we learn better from our mistakes. I always say, even with my home life, if I'm playing with a recipe and everything goes wrong, I always remember what I did wrong. But when something goes perfectly and I get something that I absolutely love, I never remember what I did to get that result. So I think it's really important not to be afraid to make mistakes in sewing, in embroidery, in life in general. So I'm making sure that all of my trimming is good. I am picking up lint. I am picking up threads. I am going to take out my base sting. And you see how nice and easily that pulls up because it is a nice loose stitch. I basically pull up and cut that bobbin thread as I'm going along and that just pulls right out. And I want to make sure all that little lint, all that fuzz is out of there. Because whatever will be caught on here will forever stay in your project. Now this one here, I am going to put in the middle of a quilt. So this will be my center piece in a quilt. So I cut my batting a little bit larger. The fleece is a really good idea if you're going to make a decorative pillow, a quilt, something that will be washed. It will not shrink. It will not fade. Um, it will not do any of that. You know, Vivian, I like the idea of using a lint roller, but I left my lint roller upstairs. The joys of doing live. I am putting my hoop back onto my machine. I am going to be bringing everyone back over. Now, my design is back at stitch number one, which is exactly where I want it to be. Because I'm going to be re-stitching this design, but with my topper fabric. If you're doing a quilt, quilt as you go, you would want to add backing to this as well. 
and I just need to get to a spot where I could lock my hoop in. So I could not only add this top piece, I could add the back piece and do quilt as you go as well. Now, my fabric has been creased, and you can't see that on screen, but I have my center markings on my fabric. So I'm moving this underneath the foot, and I am lining up those creases with the center markings on my hoop, and I am making sure that my needle is right and center. I do not want to base this down, so I am going to be using my magnets. So with my top layer of fabric, I am placing this, I am placing my magnets in place. And why do I use magnets and when do you use magnets? It is never inappropriate to use magnets. Now, my flower is stitching first. I could stitch with different color threads and switch this out. I could do all white thread. I could do uh, several different things. And I am going to put the color in. So I'm going to thread up my machine with the pink thread. So I'm just going around a camera, a light, and a few other things. And I'm threading my machine now. Again, I'm doing needle up down. Make sure my needle is in the correct position. I am locking my machine and I'm threading. That needle up down is vital when you're doing, when you're using your needle threader. I'm gonna pull that loop out and I'm gonna hit start. Now I'm eyeing my fabric And I like that contrast with the color thread. So Brenda is asking what needles I am using. I use a Janome purple tip needle anytime I am going through a layer of batting. That needle is a cobra head and it really makes all the difference in the world when you're going through batting. You get no skip stitches and that batting doesn't come up and pill, especially with the fleece. Um, sometimes fleece gets threads and fuzz that will come through, and that purple tip needle just avoids that altogether. And I'm going to get really close in. You could see that color and you could see how puffy that is. And that is what Trapunto is. That puffiness. So Lana is asking, yes, I did iron my crosshairs into my fabric. I have had some just awful, awful things happen with marking fabric and it coming back. <coughs> so whenever possible, I only use an ironed in crosshair. And Marie, 
you caught me. Um, I was not able to reach and connect in the magnets, and I did not want to hold everything up. Normally I would, but for me to get those magnets on, I noticed that the angle I was at, I was going to unhoop everything, and I did not want to do that. And now I am going to switch to green thread for the leaves. Now this is also very pretty done all in white thread. So it's just a matter of the look you're going for. With the colored thread, it just gives it more of a modern look. And when you do all white, it gives it more of an heirloom look. So needle up down, I'm locking my machine. I am using my needle threader. See what a big difference using that needle up down makes? And my thread shredded. This happens to be a rayon thread, which I'm normally not a big fan of. And I just am at such a bad angle, I can't see what I'm doing. Let's try that again. Perfect. So when I go to three in a row, especially live, I'm going to thread and it happens. Perfect. I'm going to unlock and I'm going to touch my scissor button because I left such a long tail and I'm seeing that one thread there. Um, always, um, Make sure that if you're doing anything like I'm doing, clipping threads, don't do it while the machine is running. It never ends pretty. And I'm just going to go out. The magnets come with the machines that have hoops that you're able to use the... Um, if your machine is able to use the magnets, it came with it. You're able to get extras, but I know on the 15,000, the Skyline 9, um, on quite a few of our machines, you're able to do that. Lana is asking, as you change your top threaders, your top thread colors, I wonder what your, um, what my consistent bobbin thread is. This is a white pre-wound Janome bobbin. I pretty much use my pre-wound bobbins uh, that Janome makes for just about everything. I use them when I piece, when I embroider. Um, the only time I really wind and change my thread colors is if I am doing free motion quilting where the back is going to be seen. But I have my white thread in there with all of my color changes. So Tammy, uh, you joined us late, not a problem. If you go back through the questions and the thread, there's a link for the designs. And I did them in either four or five sizes so that it would fit a multitude of machines. So, um... You should be able to download them and be able to do this design. And isn't this amazing? We are done. Um, in less than an hour going through the class, going through all that trimming, I'm going to go through and see if there's questions. I am going to take this out of the hoop. I'm going to remove the hoop and I am going to put this on the side. And I'm going to move my camera so that you could see that finished result. And I'm going to double check those messages. So this is the finished design of the flower and the leaves. That shadow work trapunto, it goes a step above a typical applique. 
it goes beyond a typical quilting motif, but it is nothing that a beginner cannot do. I want you to really look at your designs that you have and really think about how else they can be used and how to go beyond what they're intended to do. So this is something that I do a lot. I am gonna give you a reminder of what this looks like in the machine. So in the machine, this typically was a quilting motif. And here's the design that comes in the machine. It's meant to go through a quilt sandwich. And with this particular runner that I did, I did quilt as you go with some decorative stitches. When I saw that, I really wanted color in the flower and in the leaf. So in my digitizer, I did do that as an applique. When I did the applique, I liked the color, but I didn't like how flat it looked. So that's where adding the fleece and making it trapuntoed, and I'm gonna get in really close, but that is just, it's puffier in the flower than it is in the leaf, and it gives it dimension. And I just love the dimension to that. I am going to turn my camera around and I am going to get you towards me. Now this pin cushion you're looking at is something else that was meant to be just a square design. But when I thought about that, I was able to turn that into a pin cushion. And here I am. Perfect. So I'm just trying to get myself situated so that... Perfect. So I, um, I'm looking at questions to see if there's anything that needs to be... I'm glad, Kathy, you enjoyed that trick with the fleece. I tried so many different fabrics, and when you're trying to cut and trim with two layers of batting, it's hard to tell if you're cutting that bottom layer, the layer you shouldn't be cutting, or if you're cutting what you should be cutting. So having just one layer to trim, one cut out a lot of work, and it just made it easier to do this. Um, I'm glad that everyone is really um, enjoying the class. I really apologize for that going in and out, just something beyond our control, but know that you can go back and watch all of the videos. Now, the best place to find all of the videos to go back is to go to the main page. That main page is a, the Janome Sewing Machine page. And that's where most of the videos are housed. So if you're having a difficult time finding something, go to that page. There's a video tab. When you touch that, they're categorized. So it'll be lives only, and I think there's something like 50 some odd live videos now. There will be um, just a few different um, categories. You could see all of Kimberly's in one spot. Um, remember on the 30th, I will be doing a basic overview of the embroidery editing functions on the sewing machines page. On June 24th, I'll be doing a basic sewing machine overview, and that's on this page, the classroom page, at 2 o'clock. So take a look for your um, emails and your uh, comments on Facebooks with all of those dates coming up. Now I know Anne, I heard my phone go off, um, just started her live on the Janome sewing machine page. So it looks like there's no more questions. I'm gonna end so that you could go join Anne on her live on the sewing machine page. So bye-bye everyone.